I was studying in Peking University before to learn Chinese. I chose Peking University because I wanted to study in the best university. Um, I wanted to study in Beijing. So I chose Peking University because I thought that compared to Tsinghua University, the culture of Peking University is kind of very creative and thinking about new ideas. And so I really liked that I saw that Tsinghua is more about engineering and it's more of getting stuff done and doing things. So I chose Peking University and I've heard a lot of really good things about Peking University. I really wanted to study in the best university in China. My experience at university was absolutely amazing. It's such a good place to study. The campus is so beautiful. So you can see all of these different amazing places in Peking University. I got a certificate as an expert in Chinese tea and I found that this was a really good way to learn Chinese. Surrounded by Chinese people in the tea shop learning about Chinese tea, I found this was a really good way to improve my Chinese, talking about any daily things. Instead of just in a textbook, I found it really helpful to speak Chinese in a tea, in a tea shop. I studied Chinese in the, the old Russian buildings and it was beautiful and there's so many amazing facilities in Peking University and one of the amazing things that I really liked about Peking University was the quality of the people there. How everyone is so smart and ambitious and it's really good to be surrounded by these people who are the top 0.5% in this whole country. It was amazing just to be surrounded by these kind of people and just experience, learn from them and it's such an amazing opportunity to study in the number one university. One of the things that I did is I would, would try and go into classes of various different things because I was learning Chinese but I would often go into the School of Economics and Management and just sit in on classes and learn many new things, different fields which you can do and you can just experience new classes because there's just always so many things going on in so many different classes, that was great. Actually, I met a girl in the tea shop and she was called Yueja and she gave me the Chinese name India because I'm from England and it also is good because my English name is Richard Coward and the opposite of coward is Ing, hero and so India means English hero who is outstanding, Jia. As an English guy, I really like, I'm always drinking tea all the time. I even have uh, tea here. I'm always drinking tea and in China, they have the similar culture of always drinking tea. And it was amazing to learn about uh, Chinese tea and you can get to learn about the culture uh, from tea. It was amazing to learn about all these different teas and just constantly ask questions. I used to be in the tea shop and then I would translate for people who came in and practice my Chinese. And it's so, after three or four hours in the tea shop just drinking tea, you just feel so amazing and so relaxed. Great way to learn Chinese and practice and relax as well. I really recommend this place called Ma Lian Dao, which is Ma Lian Dao. near to Peking University. Probably about 20 minutes away by taxi. Yeah, another thing that I found is being in the taxi is a great way to practice Chinese because you're always speaking to the taxi driver. And actually at the time I realized that a taxi was actually cheaper than Chinese class. So you can get a taxi, go somewhere, and you're paying less than if you pay a Chinese teacher. And it's a great way to learn and you can just get the, cha the taxi driver to be your teacher as well. And so that was, yeah, that was a great way to learn. Taxis in China is very cheap, so you don't have to spend much. And then the taxi drivers always have really interesting opinions about different things that is uh, fascinating. You can learn many things. At the time, people would tell me that my Chinese uh, accent is like a mixture between a Beijing taxi driver and it's also a little bit girly because I, all of my teachers, many people who I spoke to were girls and the taxi drivers were speaking in the local accent. So I made an effort to speak to more guys and to practice and have some guy teachers as well so I can become more, instead of going between the taxi driver and the and the feminine, I would try and be, just try and develop my own uh, Chinese style. 
as an English guy, I'm just used to saying thank you and please, and I just found that it's not so common in China, but they, sh they show their sincerity in different ways. So this is one of the cultural things that I found, was that when I'm in a restaurant, I would always say thank you and please, and people telling me that I'm doing too much, because uh, that's how I do in England, in and it's like the culture is different, but in China, you don't need to say thank you, and there's this interesting cultural thing about if you're saying thank you, it means that you're not so intimate. You're not, you're not so close to that person. So people can become a little bit, uh, feel like there's more of a distance to you if you say thank you. Because So this is like one of the things about, in, a, in England we're kind of more individualistic, but in China they're more of a group. So you kind of expect people to do favors for you and you will give favors for them and things like that. When I first came I thought everyone was very rude, but it's just my lens of how I saw things. It's not actually rude, it's just a different way of thinking about it. We did all these amazing shows and had like an amazing experience in the university and we went to acrobatics, we went to different outings to different places. We went to the Great Wall, I think. We went to the uh, mountains in the west of Beijing and we did all these activities and it was great fun And in the first week to meet lots of cool people, interesting people. There's actually a lot of international students in Peking University. It's around six or seven thousand international students. Quite a big number. And it's a similar number in Tsinghua University. I really recommend Peking University for their bachelors. I think they didn't have any programs in English. So you have to learn Chinese to get into that. And then for master program, they, they do have a load of programs in English, like the MBA programs and law programs, many other master programs that you can apply to. Then they also have the Chinese language program, which has one or 200 every year. And then they have lots of exchange programs for one semester. So you can go there for one semester and then go back to your home country. And many of these are free your university to go there. And I was not staying on the campus because there's limited spaces on the campus. So I stayed in a place in Wadaoke. I rented an apartment in Wadaoke and stayed there and then went to Peking University every day. And I kind of recommend doing that because you can also experience both sides. In the campus is also nice, but you want to make sure that you get a good dormitory because there are different buildings. Some of them are a little bit older than others, so you want to choose a modern one. Uh, but you get also living off campus is a great option as well, but it's going to be a bit more expensive. The rent in that area is kind of going up a bit, but it's still much cheaper than if you're going to pay rent in London, it's still much cheaper. They're probably about half the price, I think, in compared to London. But obviously you can even save more money if you share it with other people. And most people will just share it. And there's a great website called Wellsea where you can, you can try and find apartments. You can check out Peking University on social media like Instagram and Facebook and YouTube as well and they have uh, all of these cats that you can see around the campus and uh, it's really a beautiful campus, I really recommend you check it out. Peking University, Tsinghua University, many people are trying to choose where you study and then also you have Shanghai, you have some great universities as well and so there's a lot of different universities you can choose. My company China Emissions, we help many students to apply to universities in China so you can also check it out. I really recommend you apply to a top university in China because amazing experience and you can meet lots of really smart and top people. It's important who you surround yourself with because they influence you and you can learn from them as well. 
It's really a good thing to go to a really top university if it's possible and I really recommend it and then it gives you this huge insight into this new amazing place which is China. When I was studying there I just felt like my whole mind opened up to this new experience and new country and I could just see things in a new way of how Chinese people think and it's just amazing so I really recommend you check it out. I hope this is helpful I think it's important that people share more about their experiences.